Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. In a video that I did recently titled Sony Steals Customers Purchase Content, Piracy is Completely Justified, I was going over how Sony and Discovery stole content out of the libraries of people that had bought and paid for movies, television shows, etc. Uh, we have streaming services where you are essentially watching something, you're paying to watch it until the stream is over may be available today, may not be available tomorrow. And we have purchases. Purchases as in, I bought it, I own it, you cannot take it away from me. In the United States of America, when you tell somebody they are buying a movie, they are buying a television show, that they are purchasing it, that tends to mean that I am going to be able to have access to that as long as I want. I bought it, it's mine, you cannot reach into my home and take it away from me. Unfortunately, nowadays we live in a world with a changing definition of ownership that is not changing in favor of the consumer. Whether we're talking about stuff that you're not allowed to fix after you purchase it, whether it's a MacBook computer or a John Deere tractor, or we're talking about devices that ask for more money after the sale so that you can get access to the same features that you had when you purchased it that did not require extra money at the time of purchase, that now requires that you pay them a subscription fee to get access to features that used to be free, or Arlo cameras. There are a number of different products nowadays that are just engineered and designed the way they are sold, where the manufacturer can take away your ability to do what you wish with what you own after the sale. And it's something Something that many of my viewers find disgusting that I do not let up on in this channel at all. And this is something that many people found disgusting. When you read the terms of service over here, it says very clearly, as of December 31st, 2023, due to our content licensing arrangements with content providers, you will no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased Discovery content, and the content will be removed from your video library. We sincerely thank you for your continued support. Thank you, PlayStation Store. Again, the word purchase means something. Rent? Stream, lease, we expect we have to give it back. Purchase, we expect that it is ours. And it looks like Sony and Discovery have reneged on this because of the negative backlash that they got. And good on all of you for being a part of that negative backlash. It says, update on Discovery entitlements affected titles. Due to updated licensing agreements, the Discovery content removal plan for December 31st, 2023 is no longer occurring. We appreciate your ongoing support and feedback. And it's very interesting because when you look into the timing of this, it happens right at the same time that HBO Max and Discovery Plus are looking to add as many subscribers to their streaming services as possible by adding as much exclusive content as possible. Many streaming services nowadays are trying to compete on content exclusivity. How much exclusive content do we have on our platform? So if we're able to take content off of other platforms that you could only watch it on ours, we have an argument for people to be able to use our platform. The problem that occurs here is that when somebody has paid you 15 to 25 dollars for a piece of content and you use the word purchase to describe it and then you take it away from them that person on average would rather crawl through a Shawshank Redemption sewer of shit than subscribe to a monthly streaming service to get access to that thing that they already bought and paid for. They're never going to give you money ever again and that's a big part of why I believe they reversed the decision because they realize this is not a way to get more people to use our platform. We are not going to improve our sales on Discovery Plus and HBO Max if if we screw over all of our customers in order to try and get to pay for our services. And this is something that used to be obvious. This is something that businesses used to understand. If we screw over our customers, they will not want to give us money anymore. But it is something that seems to have been forgotten in the modern day. What I also wanted to include in this video is a defense of what I said in the title here. I said that in this instance, that piracy is completely justified. And there were a lot of people that responded saying, Lewis, you don't understand. You're, you're an idiot. What you were actually purchasing was a temporary revocable license to view the content. Um, and, he, and here's the thing for, for, for the, the, the dumbasses that say shit like this, for the people that, uh, that, that are, are, are so stupid, they think that this is actually a sustainable way of doing business. Uh, th this, this is not how anybody does business if they actually want to succeed. This is not how people do business if they... If they uh, this is not how people do business who are not rapist fucks. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with, with my terminology here. This is one of the things that I've said many times, what I like to call EULA roofing, end user license agreement roofing. Rather than tell me up front what your intentions are, you are trying to act in a very rapey way to get me to consent to something that I otherwise wouldn't usually consent to. So what they said is technically correct. What they said is that in the terms of service and user agreement, you will find terms that say that I did not actually purchase this content. The word purchase is being used in a very funny way. And if we were to print PlayStation's terms of service as a PDF and scroll through it to find where they say that, what you'll notice over here is once I print it as a PDF and have it as a you know fairly average font size over here, and we actually look for this, you'll, you'll find that the, they said this on, on, on page 22. It's there on page 22. Uh, all content provided a license on a non-exclusive and revocable basis. 
Now, here's the thing. I run a business and I've run a business for damn near 15 years now. And one of the things that I do when I run my business, if I think that there is an item in my terms or how I do business that is going to be controversial to people, I tend to say that up front. If there's any aspect of how we do business that I realize somebody's going to go, wait, wait, wait a second, I don't like that. I don't put it on page 22 of a EULA that I know in my heart nobody will read. Do I have the legal right to do that? Absolutely. Am I lower than a piece of dog shit for doing that? Yes, I would be. There are terms in my business that people find controversial. Back in the day, I would tell people that we are repairing your motherboard rather than replacing it. That's why I can bill you $250 while everybody else is billing you $750 to $2,000. Uh, I realized that lots of people expected replacements, so I would make sure that I said up front what we are doing is repair, not replacement. If you're not okay with that, please do let me know. By the way, for data recovery services, in certain instances, the deposit is non refundable if we have to buy certain expensive or rare donors for your device. Are you okay with that? I do not put that shit in page 60 of some fucking EULA because I understand that my customers are not reading that. If I understand that my customer is not reading something, and I also understand that I'm using terminology that is going to mislead them into the belief that what they have done is actually purchase something that they own, I'm going to say that up front. The only reason that you would use language like purchase up front, but then hide in page 22 of some bullshit EULA that you don't actually have access to what you purchased and we can take it back at any time is because you don't want the customer to know that. You want the ability to do sneaky ass shit after the sale, but you don't want your customers to be informed before the sale. If you wanted your customer to be informed before the sale, what you would do is you would put that shit in nice big print before they bought it. By the way, we have a very special 21st century definition of the word purchase. Here's how we define purchase, just so you know before you give us money but they don't do that. And there's a very obvious reason that they don't do that. It's the same reason that Netflix doesn't tell you when you pay them extra money for 4K. By the way, even if you're somebody who fixes motherboards for a living, have fun spending a half hour trying to fuck with your computer setup to figure out how to actually get anything over 720p output to the fucking monitor on your computer. Oh yeah, we don't support your type of CPU. I'm sorry. I know you can decode and encode 8K video in real time on your setup, but we're only gonna give you a one megabit per second 720p stream in spite of the fact that you paid extra there's a reason that that stuff is always in the fine print, that it's always something that you got to scroll through to find because they know that they would have less customers if they said that up front. These companies want the ability to use words like purchase, high definition, everything else, and then provide you anything but. You're not purchasing. You're not getting high quality. You're not getting what it is that you bought and paid for. You're getting something else. They want to use deceptive words in marketing so that they can make more money. And listen, if you want to do that, if you want to deceive your users, you do you. But don't be surprised when they decide that they are going to pirate your shit because you fucked with them. And when you say that piracy is wrong because it is illegal, one of the videos that I did on this channel about seven years ago was a video from a, that was inspired by a friend of mine named Dino. He used to say, if you're going to be the bitch, be the whole bitch. Don't be a half bitch here. And what he meant is that if you were doing something or you were saying something that was either unpopular, that was likely to get you in trouble, that was likely to piss somebody off, you need to say that shit as soon as humanly possible because they're going to figure out anyway, you might as well have some balls and say it up front. Because when you say it up front, at least you have a better chance of being able to get away with it than if you hide and sneak around and try to avoid the consequences until later. And I genuinely believe in that way of life. If you are going to be the bitch, if you are going to redefine the word purchase, don't do it on page 22 of your EULA, put that shit right next to the add to cart, buy it now button to make people understand that what you call purchase is not what 99% of America calls purchase. And if you're not okay with that, then that's fine. People are going to be more than happy to pirate your content from now until the end of time. Uh, there is the argument that that is not technically legal. That is the law says that that is illegal. That is not right. And I would like to refer you to what Bill Burr said in this old skit where he was talking about what the law says with regards to hitting his wife with a mop. He was saying something, I forget, it was something along the lines of like, you know, you're not allowed to do that's what the law says. And then he's like, you know, a hundred years ago, I could hit you over the head with a mop. You know, that's what the law says. It doesn't make it right. Uh, you know, obviously a uh, little stretch there for, for comedic effect, but there are a lot of things that were legal that don't necessarily make them right. Is this technically what the contract says? Yes. Did you fuck with your customer by using the word purchase and then hiding this shit on page 22 of the EULA? You know what you're doing. And as long as you know what you're doing, and as long as I know that you know what you're doing and that you're doing it for nefarious purposes, I don't feel bad pirating your shit, and neither should you. 
You should feel bad if you never had an intention to pay. You should feel bad if there's content that you genuinely enjoy from actors and actresses and musicians and people you care to support that you continuously consume on a regular basis without ever paying the people responsible. But when they literally reach into your house and fucking steal from you and have a little smirk on their face saying, that's what the EULA said, the EULA has a different definition of purchase than what you think. Do you think I'm going to feel bad for the company in that instance when people decide to not give them money? Hell no, because they already got your money and they fucked you out of your content anyway. So what guilt do you have to get what they stole from you back? That is the only method that you have to make things fair in an unfair world. And I'm not going to take that away from you. Nobody should take that away from you. When I use words like EULA roofing or rapist mentality, I am being very explicit in my word choice. I want to get across the complete lack of understanding of the concept of consent these people have, that they've had for damn near 20 years now. Whether we're talking about hiding, redefining the word purchase on page 22, or we're talking about installing rootkits on your fucking computer. Sony BMG copy protection rootkit scandal. I was a teenager when this stuff came out, and I still remember this. Some of my viewers are so young that they may not remember that music used to come on these circle things that were shiny on the bottom that you would put in an optical drive. You remember those things where you actually had to wait five or ten seconds after you put the disc in for it to show up, for it to spin up and everything? They were installing rootkits on your computer. You would put the disc in the machine, and without your consent, it would install a rootkit on your computer if you had auto run installed, which by the way, you should have never had auto. I was very, very happy to be a Linux user back then. I was very happy to be using my SUS Linux 8.1 professional where I had to install uh, SCSI emulation manually to get my IDE CD burner to work properly. But one of the benefits of that Linux clusterfuck is I didn't have auto run which meant that when I put a Sony CD in my computer, I did not have their rootkit, their virus, their garbage installed onto my computer without my consent. This is not new from Sony. Sony has been violating their customer's consent for two decades now, and they will likely continue to attempt to do so into the future unless their customers check them on it or stop giving them money. Both of these are good options in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.